the dinosaurs had millions and millions and millions of years, and they didn't do shit. Welcome to episode 178 of Front Seat Gamer. I'm Nick. I'm here with Blake. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't ready. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, hi. And Paul. Hi. I switched it up. I was looking at Paul and I decided to say Blake. Oh, I you don't know threw why. me. Oh, my why. God. <laughs> um, uh, and that was great. That, that was I really great. enjoyed that. How, oh, my God. I feel refreshed. How are you doing, Nick? This is like a completely different show now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Um. It's Easter day as of recording. It is. How many eggs have you eaten? Many eggs in your house? I ate one. I ate a small Oreo egg. Did you say you did a Easter egg hunt? I did do I did it I did an That's Easter so egg cool. hunt with my daughter. That's so cool. Um, I, did you find more than her? Uh I didn't find any because I placed oh. I placed them. Oh, so you already knew so where they knew were. Where in fact, it, if you want to talk about it, it was a little bit of like a a design challenge in a, in a sense. Oh no! <laughs> here, was, here was the plan. Okay, the plan was we had a basket. Yep. And we had like a big chocolate bunny in it, and a few big eggs, and lots and lots of little eggs. Yep. And a couple toys and some slippers. Mm. Like it was just like a little a little basket of, of gifts and chocolate. That's cool. But lots lots probably way too much chocolate for uh, a three year old. Um, <laughs> she's not even three yet, so it's really a, an almost three year old. Anyway, um, the problem is we did a a Easter egg hunt at someone else's house on Friday, uh, which was just hard boiled eggs. And it was just, for, like, <laughs> it was like three kids. And they were, the whole point of it was just to find the eggs. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And that is the fun part, to be honest. Yes. Of, well, of the hunt. Uh, I like my, eating chocolate. My daughter loves chocolate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's definitely always, a fun part to that. Too. I always found finding them more fun than eating them. Blake, there's something wrong with your brain. Now, um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you see the games I play? Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the problem was when we, when we watched this, like, Easter egg hadn't played out, like, three-year-olds are not good at finding mm. They don't know what's going on. Not, not really. They, they don't really understand. They, they, they kind of get it, but mm. they, there's not a huge amount of motivation there. They're not, they don't understand, like, looking for things. Yeah. They, uh, there's an implication that they already understand the environment, mm. and they may not already understand the environment. So, when, when... I watched this play out. I knew we were going to do this Easter egg hunt, and we knew we were going to do this basket. And I was like, well, we want her to find the basket. So we were going to do a trail, yeah. right? But we also, I also wanted her to have, like, the fun of looking for the eggs. And so we spent, you know, maybe an hour last night setting up the eggs mm. in specific ways with specific eye lines and specific heights and trying to figure out, like, the order in which she would probably discover them yeah. and make sure that she's led – to the basket, but also, like, so that she wouldn't shortcut the basket. Yep. She'd get all the eggs along the way, mm. but still have the fun of, like, finding the eggs as opposed to just icy when they're icy yep. when they're icy when they're. Um, and so, like, that was, like, a fun little challenge of, like, we'll, we'll make sure that there's, like, a, a stuffed toy animal obscuring it from this angle. Yeah, so yeah, she, when yeah. she goes to collect this other egg, she can then see it. Ah. And um, and it, it worked a dream. We, we had, like, maybe 10 egg trail, maybe maybe more than that. To get to the basket, mm. uh, maybe it was like twelve, and uh, she only missed one, and it was only at the very end when she could see the basket. Oh wow! Well. Skip past. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was a little one on like a stack of blocks, so oh, it was totally right. fine. Very, very, very. Actually, pleased with the. Yeah, results. that is so cool. That is some the real fun design, little, fun little level design challenge. Yeah, yeah. that was, is so it's cool. A, it's a classic. Uh, it almost product. sounds more fun for you than it would have been for her. Oh, she That's had a good really time. Like, mm. Yeah, um, but it, it was fun. It was like a little <laughs> bread crumbing challenge. Yeah, and, uh, and I really got a kick out of it. That is so cool. That's pretty. Cool. No, it's the like it. maybe the first time like game design skills have actually helped in real life. You always and were. You have always said last time. <laughs> I've heard you say before <laughs> that your skills don't translate into the they real really world. Don't. Well, here you go. Yeah, finally, finally, <laughs> finally. The one egg, one Easter yeah. hunt, uh, and and maybe never yeah. again. Because <laughs> next year she'll be old enough to like, yeah, look for things probably. Yeah, you could still. Yeah, that just means you need a 
increase the difficulty. Right? Yeah. You could just true. build up like an escape room style. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> this is like, here's a riddle yeah. with like some numbers, yeah. and then you have to like look up on a Who board. Who murdered of... the Easter Bunny? Let's oh, find oh, out. Do it. <laughs> You're not leaving a room until you figure this out. You, can't, you have a great time, and also there's a hollowed out block with a key. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, the murder great. weapon was a gun. <laughs> so good. Um, I did an Easter egg hunt a few years back for my nieces and nephews. Yeah, uh, and it was we didn't put that much thought into it. They were much older than um, they were like close-ish to ten, I think, between five and ten. Yep. Uh, and we so we just put them around. But what I did, I uh, got some potatoes mm-hmm. and mixed. Uh, put tinfoil around them mm-hmm. and planted those <laughs> around as well. So there were some like duds. You know? That's good stuff. Um, when we did the Easter egg hunt on uh, Friday, uh, we did, I, I was like, I don't know, 40 or so eggs, some, a lot oh, of eggs. Yeah. And we did it for the kids first. And then um, the host wanted to do, uh, one of the, the dads to do an egg hunt for the mums. Oh, so funny. it was just two of us. Yeah. And then, um, and like th- three mums. And uh, we were, we sort of tried to make an Easter egg hunt, but only one, only the host really participated in the hunt. Uh-huh. So it really became one person looking for so eggs funny. hidden by three people. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, that was fun because she's not that tall. <laughs> no. and I, accidentally, I accidentally did not realize I was using height as an advantage. Yeah, yeah. That's um, funny. Uh, lots, of, lots of color matching. Color matching is a really good oh, Easter yeah. egg hunt hiding tactic like you put a green egg with a bunch of like green fruits yep yep mm. and like yeah, yeah. uh like a white egg up against the white wall or right. whatever it is you know it's fun fun little stuff that's cool that sounds yeah. fun yeah you know what turns out looking for stuff is fun yeah See, unless I told unless you. you really need it <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> put your phone yeah. yeah not a fun hunt. yeah um yeah. all right you guys been playing stuff yeah i've been, I've been playing stuff you've been playing stuff though i've been playing some stuff you've been what have you been playing? <laughs> what have you been playing? I have been playing The Witcher 3. Yep. I played some Cyberpunk. Mm-hmm. Um, I played a bunch of mobile games. Uh, well, actually, here's the thing. Do you want to do questions up front? I hate to, I hate to oh, take, was, cut it off. That was a well, fast pivot. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you've just reminded me, because we did have a question, uh, or a comment, a suggestion, a while back about Cyberpunk. Oh, you want me to read that one out? Yeah. Okay. Um, this just says, Blake, that's why. Oh, yeah. Um. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I assume it's a play on Blake Y. It's it's you. It's from you saying write in and say Blake Y. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077, 20, 20, Phantom Liberty. For games to check out next and that are good, Nick. Phantom, the Phantom Liberty update did a pass over pretty much all game systems, balance, and UI. So much has been added and changed. It's practically a different and better game now. On top, there are new gameplay elements. Phantom Liberty story is incredible. I hope... Uh, you check it out and discuss it on the podcast. Well, I haven't got Phantom Liberty. I've got the base game. Um, the base game so, did oh, wait, come more. with Sorry. A, a load of um, new updates from Phantom Liberty. Mm. Yeah, I suspect I've I, I've benefited from mm. a lot of the balance changes. Uh, this is this is from Robin. He also said, "P.S. I owned and played on PC my whole life, but in August we moved to a new flat, and I got myself a big TV and PS5, which is my very first real console, not counting the Switch. And I'm playing <laughs> Cyberpunk 27, 2077 on the PS5." Man, is it fun to play on the couch? That's yes, cool. console gaming is fun. Yeah, it's, it's funny that he says it's my first console, not counting the Switch, as if the the Switch is to be fair, that's a Switch real is console, portable, right? Yeah, it's so, a different thing to like having something in, to intentionally play on the TV. I, yeah. I, and I high quality. I play it mostly on the TV. Same. Yeah. Same. Um, yeah, so do I. It's uh, still different though. Yeah, I suppose like the portableness is like. Just a neat extra thing, I yeah. think. It's also significantly lower powered. Than yeah. So it's not a real console? It's not, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That was Rob. <laughs> Rob said that. Um, thanks for writing in, Rob. Um, do you want me to read out some other things? Uh, yeah, sure. I guess. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about uh, Phantom Liberty if and when one mm. of us plays it. I have been planning to play it because... Um, I had a great time. I think I talked about it on the podcast maybe like a year ago. I had a really great time restarting um, Cyberpunk Cyberpunk and playing as with a uh, katana blade build Mm. and just activating slow mo and just slicing off heads and then the slow mo stops and all the enemies just drop to the ground like real anime (laughs) style. So much fun! It does sound fun. I've been playing as a net runner. 
Oh. So I've been making people set themselves on fire. Oh, that's cool. And, um, spread disease. Spread disease? Yeah, it feels a bit like a turn-based game. Oh, okay. Because, like, you go into scan mode. Yeah. And then you just go, okay, uh, overheat, 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 contagion. Oh. And, then, like, they all kind of catch on fire and, yep. and disease spreads, and then they all oh, wow. are dead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And I'm just standing around the corner waiting for it to happen. <laughs> waiting for the room to be yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a That's brave, like, like, like a big brave boy. Yep. Well, you, have you been doing things of like um, you hack into the camera and then yep. you can see another camera from that and you hack into that and it like you can l- leads a trail to like a specific thing and then you can hack someone from there. Not that so much that. Not so much that. Um, but that's just because I'm, I don't think I'm that far in. Um, like I was what, seven or eight hours in before I saw the titles? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy hell. I didn't okay. realize. I mean, I got sidetracked a bit. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I like going yeah. around with scan mode on, just seeing all of the gang members who are in normal yeah. society and setting them on fire and making them spread disease. That's cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, what a world to live in, man. You could yeah. just be killed in an instant. Yeah. From, you don't even know someone's looking yeah, at you're, you. You're, eating down, you're sitting down eating your noodles, and then suddenly your head catches on fire yeah. and you die. Like, like, this seems really yeah. unsafe. Real, real grim... <laughs> Uh, how's that neural Neuralink going, Elon? <laughs> that, that that sounds like a fun technology. Let's definitely all bank on that. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Uh, Witcher three, really yeah. fun. Uh, Gwent. Oh, you get hooked onto Gwent. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like the only one that I know that didn't care about Gwent. Everyone else is like, yeah, but you didn't play much Hearthstone. You... I did. I played a lot of Hearthstone. No, you didn't. Yeah, not like, not by not by normal metrics. <laughs> not you mean not by <laughs> like from my standards, I have played a lot. But you're saying from Hearthstone player standards, yeah. I barely played it. Yeah, correct. Yeah, probably. Um, what else? Uh, why didn't you? Why didn't you like Gwent? I I don't know, man. I honestly, I was like, this gets in the way of the game. How does that? How, I want, how at I, all does I, that? Is I want the case because you didn't. You, it's not like you're ever forced to play Gwent. No, you're not. You're not. But I, I, I just oh, never engaged with it. the game. I was just I like keep selecting this option. I've always, <laughs> I've always been like that though, because um, so Final Fantasy, right? They've had many games. There yeah. was, I remember there was like one that had a card game. Eight was the first one. Yeah, with the card. yeah. yeah. And I, I, mm, I literally like, I remember everyone telling me how like they're like, oh man, this, this is so great. I never engaged with it because like I just feel like I'd rather play the actual game. But the thing is, you can do both. Like it's, you can do them in sequence. Like furiously shaking his head. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For the audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like is he scrunched up his face like he's just eating a lemon? Yeah, I was like, no, no. Um, it, I, I do kind of get what he means though. Is that like I, I do get sucked into these things as well and spend way too long. Yeah, blitzball doing them. That was blitzball. yeah, blitzball. That was ten, right? Yeah, was yeah. Ten. See, I didn't. Uh, I, I, didn't I, play I, too I much. played one round of that and was like, I'm not doing this. What is wrong with you? I was like, I'm going to play the actual game. It's part of the game. It's part, it is the actual game. It <laughs> I'm is... shaking my head again. <laughs> oh boy. Oh dear. <laughs> um, well, uh, in um in Witcher, like uh, I do get it because in Witcher, it's really well integrated into the world because you can just go to these taverns and there's like a whole tournament system, right? Like you go around, um, you go around the world, go into these taverns taking out certain players and yeah you can get unique cards by yeah by talking like there's them. a whole thing I, I have friends yeah. who are like 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 when they played that game it basically turned into gwent simulator yes. where they just are going from tavern to tavern yeah, playing yeah, 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 yeah. playing gwent I'll, everything i do is to supplement my ability to find new cards see um but that's i mean that's great that everyone loves that game so i, I guess good on them for actually making a really cool card game i think that's a much better fiction as well if it is a guy who is a monster slayer to specifically supplement his like crippling card game addiction <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like uh all right oh witcher's in town oh i got a monster slay uh okay but do you have gwent do you yeah. have cards yeah yeah yeah. Uh, but can you slay the monster first yeah, 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 come on, hurry up, hurry up. It's like, oh, I really want to buy this shiny card, but I'm going to have to kill some harpies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Genuinely, my first few, like, hours was really, like, weighing up. And now I've got, like, a good a good surplus of coin, but for yeah. a while it was like, I can buy the card or I can repair my gear. Man, that's it so was funny. really a difficult... That is an actual gambling addiction that you've got there. <laughs> it's like, I could take care of myself or I could buy more cards. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
But you can also earn money through playing cards. Yeah, I know. So I know it's a really like I just it didn't click with me. I just was like It sounds like no mini game has ever clicked with you though. Yeah, I'm not a mini game kind of guy. How about uh did Final Fantasy Nine have one? I don't I don't think I, I played much nine. I played a lot of seven and eight. I played a lot of nine, but I don't remember. Nine had mini games, but I don't think it had like mm. a, a, a mini game meta the way eight and ten did. Mm. Um, and and like the new seven has like a whole card yeah. game thing. Yeah, I know. I remember you guys talking about all all these like mini games and stuff in seven. And I mean, they sound cool, but it sounds like a thing I would do once and then be like, okay, that's it. There's like chocobo racing in the original Final Fantasy seven. Yeah, you're like you'd raise your chocobos and then you'd race your chocobos. Yeah, I think I did the chocobo racing once. Good. <laughs> I don't have what time. do you do when you I play your have... games? I just play them. <laughs> uh, no, but clearly you don't. <laughs> I just don't it, engage okay with playing the game, just not the game within the game. Yeah, I don't play the game within I, the game. You know what? <laughs> I, I now understand the problem. Is that the these like meta these little games have endings to them? <laughs> like, they have win conditions. What they need. And, and you do it and you go, Oh, I I won. How boring. And I want the... something that just goes on forever. I want a version of Tetra Masters where I just I keep laying down cards. <laughs> it's just the grid is 500 by 500 and we just take turns putting cards in the grid and uh and yep. then at some point i just turn it off that's what i want <laughs> yep, that sounds that sounds right um if they in the next uh, gta if they have like um early access get mini games that you can play then probably get those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. just like it's broken and like yeah. half the mechanics uh, don't work you're not gonna play phantom liberty because it's not buggy enough <laughs> <laughs> i like he, i like really Cyberpunk when it first came out yeah. <laughs> i liked it when when everyone was eating invisible back in hot dogs the, back in the good old days yeah. <laughs> that's when i really connected with it you know oh. do you find that with any of the early access games you play they come out for release, like, I don't do you play, play them. them? You don't um, play them at all. I've played most. Uh, the thing is, most of them I don't, and this is why. Like you guys <laughs> joke that I always play early access games, but I've really put a lid on that. What was the last game you bought? Uh well, Dragon's Dogma, Dragon's Dogma Two. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, what that's about, certainly what about, not early access. <laughs> what about before that? Um, I oh, I bought uh the Alan, all the Alan Wakes. Okay. Recently, and I started mm. playing Alan Wake one. All, all of them, as in three, one or two. two. It's two Alan. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. two Alan. All, Wakes. all two of them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all two of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else did I get? I got a few things. Here's yeah, I got a I got a few things, but I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you? And none of them. No. I mean, look. You know what, Blake? I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for. I haven't bought. Yeah, I haven't bought many early access <laughs> is games. Is it because in a while. we've we've mercilessly rid- ridiculed? No. Them <laughs> Wait, does no, that mean man. that we're the most recent ones on this podcast to have bought, bought an early access game because of uh, that uh, deep rock, deep rock survivors? Yep. How um, the times have changed. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's also a game that's mostly complete. Yeah, it was. Uh, and you know what? It's fine. <laughs> hmm. Will you play it when it comes out? Yeah, probably. I mean, I think that they got some some issues with their difficulty curve. They need mm. to sort out. We can talk about that. Mm. But I want to uh, before before we dive into Dragon's Dogma two, mm. I'm curious about it. Paul, have you been playing anything? I have. I've been playing. I made it through the first Final Fantasy seven remake. You made it through. As yep. You finished it. I finished it. And how was and it? It was good. Um. I think I really enjoyed it. I've been playing the new one, so it's hard to separate mm. the two already. Mm. There's a seriously weird thing where none of what you did in the first game matters when you start the second. <laughs> wow. Which what? I didn't know, and that was disturbing. That's insane. How does that how so, like that you, It's you just a second for, game. You can like grind your characters or whatever, and then doesn't that nothing carries over. Yeah, well, no like, luckily I didn't, but Holy. I'd still been trying to like find all the things yeah. and... Yeah, yeah like, you go into the second one, and uh, there's no way to transfer your save. You can. So how does buy... it? Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but like, materia, for example. Yeah. Presumably, you're getting materia in the first one. Yep. And like socketing it and gear, gear, and upgrading you're also gear, getting. and yeah, you do. And all then, that. The, so that so the second one starts up, and your character has what? None of that. 
That's insane. That's you can um, not only is that you insane. can import one summon if you've had if you have a save file from the first game. You can import one summon. <sighs> one summon. There's one summon. This seems here. like a bad system. Yes. This seems like a like a like an error. Like like maybe like uh maybe they should they should have supported some sort of follow through. I think so. It is a little bit weird though in that people had had the first game for way too long for them to be able to balance the second game. But I, I also don't think there's actually I suspect there's no way to do that. Import save data. No, just import save data from a between two separate titles on PlayStation. Why? What you should you could you could totally do that? Like only through a third party service, though. You wouldn't be able to share. I don't think you can share. Why not storage? I just don't think you can. I I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I I there's. I mean, it is a file. A, and, a, and a game can look up a file and go, yes, this is the file. But Here's the, the data I do want. Do all the games have permission to access other games' content? But uh, they they're the made case? by the same company. They should just be like, you have access to... It can give them, they can give yeah. themselves permission. Like, this has, been, this has been done... Well, the Witcher 3 yeah. lets you... Well, hang on. No, it must be doing something because it can Witcher. tell that you've got a save game. Oh, that is different, though. And, and if it sounds like you can import something. One summon. Mm. Mm. No, it just checks that you have a save. But games have done so. Games have done this in the past, right? Yeah. Where it's like have they though between yeah. two separate titles? Yeah, yes. The Witcher, The Witcher Mass 2 Effect. and The Witcher Three. Okay, Mass Effect, Mass Effect. Any a yeah. lot of like Bioware, uh, t- Telltale games. Yeah, Telltale games especially. Yeah. Oh yes, that's a good point. There's there's been countless examples of mm. of games with like separate games with. So that means it was entirely a design, was a design decision. decision, and and it was probably a case of this seems like a balance problem. Or we don't want people who didn't get the first one to feel like they're missing out on the second one. But I would argue, for example, The Witcher 3 had let you carry decisions across from Witcher 2. Mm. Mm. I didn't play The Witcher 2. I have it. I didn't play it. Yeah. Um, and it didn't stop me from playing The Witcher 3. Uh, but if I were to discover that my stuff in The Witcher 2 didn't carry across The Witcher 3, I would probably, that would probably put a damper on my desire to buy The Witcher 3. I don't know if your stuff from Witcher 2 carries across to Witcher 3. It maybe, does. maybe not your stuff. I mean, your decisions, decisions do. Yes. But I don't think your stuff would because well, that's it's, fine. it's I, basically set years after. That's fine. I don't, I'm not saying everything. When, yeah. when I think about Final Fantasy VII, I don't want my level 99 cloud or whatever to carry mm. across. That's fine. I don't care about that. But if, for example, my cloud has a specific set of materia equipped, mm. it doesn't need to be the same level. Yeah. But I would like it to be the same setup. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. it can be, they can down level it to get it to the balance that is appropriate. Yeah. Um, and I want decisions. Like if I, if I've helped a character out in Midgar and they show up later in the game, yeah. I want them to. Yeah, you want your decisions mm-hmm. to carry over. Yeah. Um, how so? How do how does this these games work? Because I thought that they were basically remaking the discs. No, they've split the them into separate games. It, even the combat is different in the second one to the first. Yeah. Really? The, yeah. the, the second that one different. isn't even the... The second one is still part of the first disc of the original Final Fantasy. Right. That's so confusing. One, I'm so confused. I by this. was the second Final thrown. Fantasy. I didn't play it for like a week just yeah. trying to figure out... Just like, in your head, going, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> Paul's just holding a controller going, what is this? <laughs> like, what, actually, that was what are these pretty sticks? much... Yeah. Because like I, th- like I thought that they were essentially like remaking the disc so it's like but okay the bad the shitty thing is that you got to pay a hundred bucks for each disc but it's just like <laughs> here's here's the first third yeah. of the game as one as one game then you buy the second third of the game it's, not even, it's 150 i'm pretty sure oh it's God. insane that's insane uh yeah, yeah you can't I think I got it for like one twenty or something if you oh, a physical a bargain <laughs> well compared to one fifty it kind of is yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can you can spin more though. It's a bargain. <laughs> oh, if, you, can if, I if you get the if you get the digital version, oh, yeah. or like the the collector's editions. Oh yeah, the, right. the, this, this is a, dollars a... for fifty dollars for the plastic or whatever. Oh, I mean, it's still this is a bargain compared to how much the digital copy of Dragon's Dogma is. Yeah, well, how much is that? It's like one hundred and thirty bucks. Okay, um, ridiculous. 
<laughs> and I've heard, well, we'll get to it in a minute, but I've heard that Dragon's Dogma 2 is in some ways kind of a, a remake or reimagining of Dragon's Dogma. Uh, maybe, but I never played it, yeah. so it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm completely fine with that. Yeah. I think a lot of people are in my basket of um, who they'd heard of Dragon's Dogma 1. Yeah. Because it got a little bit of a cult It has some buzz. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I don't think it was a huge hit when it initially came out, but it, it, it grew. Yeah, and they did it like a Dark Arisen, which was yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's, it's funny because they did Dragon's Dogma, kind of came out sort of mediocre reception. Mm. Then they did Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, which was mm. like the souped up version of Dragon's Dogma. Right, yeah. Um, with extra content. Yeah. And now they're doing Dragon's Dogma 2, which yeah. is like a reimagining of dark arisen i mean maybe maybe I, I, I i don't know what uh i mean i don't know what the stories of uh, original yeah. dragon's Dogma were, but maybe they're doing the star wars thing where it's like it's just retelling the same thing over it's, and over it's poetry it rhymes <laughs> yeah. it's just, there's always there's always a, a a bad dragon to kill and uh don't that, google that by it. the way <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah uh great but anyway um uh final fantasy yeah. Like, so it's there's completely separate games then. Except that it carries on the story. See, that's what gets me, man. It's it, like, it, was, it really threw me. I like, thought well, they were supposed to be connected. <laughs> like, you play the, the same. The story is connected. Yes, the, but you're. But it does, it's not. It's the, con, the connection is is regardless of weird actions, right? Yes. Does it ever come up like, when you start it? Well, I guess maybe you didn't because um, you played the first one. So it, it doesn't. It must carry your actions, though, right? The thing, I mean, Final Fantasy I mean, is, the... is very linear. Yeah, there's, there's, so there's no, no actions that in the first one that will, would have mattered. Okay. I, in the original Final Fantasy, there would have been some relationship progression. Yeah. Based off things you do I mean, early on, but... I there's guess, no, there's like, no relationship tracking in that game, though. It's In the first one, yes, there is. No. Yeah, because who you, you go on a date with changes depending on different conversation settings. It, you can go on a date in the original? And, uh, and the gold saucer. Uh... There's a date segment <laughs> and different dialogue options you chose oh, at different boy, points in the game. We're digging down deep into the, the memory archives right now. <laughs> I, I don't even know why I remember this. but <laughs> I, don't remember um, this at all. I know that they've, they've remade it. For I know that there's date stuff in the remake. But, I, but that's the gold saucer's now what you're up to like you're not uh not yet um but, but it's, it's in it's in part two yes of the yeah i think it is it's in disc one of final Fantasy VII. again the fact that they had to split the first disc into two games is uh silly but hey yeah it was a good 40 hours of the first game before i completed it yeah uh, in the original or in the, the new one or the remake uh, again, silly because it's like twelve hours of the actual original Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah, yeah, and there, there's not even a lot of. It's just a. It's got heaps of cutscenes, heaps of just story. Yeah, classic JRPG stuff. I think it's it's interesting. JRPGs have become, in some ways, more self indulgent. <laughs> yeah, there there's like um, there's cutscenes for everything. There's Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of dialogue. Um, I I don't know if this is the case with all JRPGs, but a lot of ones I've been playing lately, there's a lot of repeat dialogue. Oh. Where you'll, they will sort of... It's important for the story that you understand that this character has uh, this relationship, yeah, and yeah, so they will, they will display it like four or five times mm. and in different ways. Mm. But you're just like, I get it. <laughs> I, you know, I... Uh, this person doesn't like this person. Yep. I get it. Yep. <laughs> um, mm. In some ways, I I kind of don't like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that, that that can get annoying. Yeah. I yeah. haven't had much of that in the new Final Fantasy, but okay. I guess I just... in books as well. <laughs> <laughs> I get books nowadays, though. <laughs> yeah, what nerd? <laughs> go back, go back to playing video games, nerd. Yeah, I only read Twitter. <laughs> I read Reddit comments. <laughs> yeah, just the com. I read the comments on news articles, not yeah. the news articles. <laughs> I read the headline. <laughs> I think the thing that throws me right is that this is a remake of one game. 
and it's split into however many games. Yep. So I, because it's a remake of one game, in my mind, like your character sh- sh- would cross over between those games. Mm. I, I, fully I think that's agree. What, I think that's yeah. what's throwing me because I'm. I was just thinking like something like Mass Effect or um, Dragon Age, like. I expect my decisions to cross over, but I'm not fully expecting my loadout and guns and mm. upgrades to like cross over. I don't, I don't want the power to cross over. Like I don't, yeah. I don't want my level to cross over. I don't but want because my material level to cross over. But because it's, because it's a remake of one game, like it's one game yes. that I think is in what set that expectation yes. for me. Yes. I would, I would fully expect for, if I have a specific sword, mm. I would expect to have that specific sword equipped when I load up the next. Yeah, one. yeah. Mm. Um, unless there is like an explanation, unless yeah. there is like sure a, a well, time gap where Cloud does he goes on the vacation mm. and then he gets attacked by a bear and he well, loses I mean, uh, all of his gear. Zelda, you know? right? There is a yeah, little bit. I, I like. I won't. There is an explanation, kind of, or it alludes to an explanation. Okay. Um, but. Talking about that bit of it would be very spoilery. Okay. So. Well, let's not bring it up on the podcast. But after the podcast, I'm going to grill you. Yep, yep. Um, but Blake just brought up a good point, which is Zelda. Mm. Tears of the Kingdom directly follows uh, Breath of the Wild, and Link has all the stuff when mm. that game starts. And then he loses it. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, in fact, he, he may have more stuff than you have when you finish Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it, what I don't like is that they get rid of all of the old shrines and a bunch of other old world elements and never acknowledge that. Yes, I <laughs> yeah, I don't like that, and I don't like that the um the the beasts are just not there. Yeah, the divine beasts. Yeah, are gone. Yeah, I kind of wish. I look. I I th- my my um guess mm. is it was a design decision. That if someone had not played the original, they would wonder what these things are. Why are? How do I interact with them? They seem like they're significant and important. Because but they could just they could creatures. literally just have them uh, sitting there. They don't have to do anything. That's what I'm saying though. Is if you haven't played Breath of the Wild, yeah. you pick up Tears of the Kingdom, and there's these four giant monsters. But they've, they've already got weird stuff like that. Like they've got hints to past Zelda games as basically Easter eggs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, not not in a way that is so. There's no so giant there's no, looming there's, there's Ganondorf. No clear connection, you mean? There's yeah. There's no like clear well, connection. Not just that, but there's no. If if you're trying to make a game that is fairly focused, mm. and I would say that the Zelda games are pretty focused. Yeah. They they have fairly minimal mechanics that let you do lots of stuff, mm. right? Um, th- what they don't want are these things that players are going to assume are interactable or are important for story sure. purposes. Yeah. Like, oh, there's these giant divine beasts. Surely I must be able to get inside them and do stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I get it. I get it. But surely there's a better way than just I agree. never having them there and not mentioning them. Fully agree. Whatsoever. <laughs> Fully agree. So you I, as the player are like, where are they? And no one in the world is even mentioning them. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I think, for example, that the old shrines could have been, like, they could have still been there. They could have collapsed. Yeah. And they could have, like, Just little, have little monsters. Like, it could be a monster camp or a bandit yeah, camp or yeah. something. Um, because, like, I mean, you you say you don't want, like, new players to be confused. But yeah. if, if you had stuff like that, wouldn't that make you go, wow, what are these things? Maybe I should play the first one. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't disagree. Maybe, maybe there should be a sign that says... When Zelda interacts with us, says, "Boy, <laughs> oh boy, I sure what? wish I remembered this." Yeah. <laughs> what, what was this again? I guess I'll have to go back and. And then look. the Nintendo uh, I, e- eShop pops up. What is that? Do I feel something in my hair? Is that the Breath of the Wild? <laughs> <laughs> boy, that was such a crazy adventure I had. <laughs> boy. Uh, <laughs> I can't describe the things. You just had to be there. I, guess, I wish so, I could experience it. Yeah, I wish I could experience it. Um, yeah, no, I agree. Uh, you've been playing Bellatro as well, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and you really like that. Yeah. So what was that great. again? Can we recap what that was? Because B- Bellatro, no, I look. I have barely looked into it. <laughs> but my understanding is a poker-based roguelite. Yeah. So uh, you, I guess, gather powers, it, and, and it's about getting poker hands that will deal damage to your opponent. 
Uh, all it really is, is a series of, uh, stages where you have to get a higher score each time to beat the thing. Yeah. Um, sometimes the, it'll have three matches you've got to do. Yeah. The third one will be, uh, I think it's called the big blind. Um, big blind. Yeah. Okay. And it's like the boss of that. I'm not even sure that's what it's called, but yeah, the, the third one is the harder one of the three and it'll have a certain modifier that's random. Yeah. Um, and yeah, essentially you've just got to get a higher score each time to keep progressing. Yeah. And the goal is to get make, make your way through eight of these three matches. Yeah. Um, and it's a higher so score than your opponent, right? Or you're, you're, you're you don't actually even have an opponent, really. It's the opponent is just the score that you've got to beat. Okay, mm. okay. So they it's up, really they just a game about scaling. Yeah. Mm. Um, and along the way, you'll have shops where you can swap out cards, do various random mm. things. So you're trying to build your deck into being something that is going to do get higher and higher scores. Mm. Yeah. And you've got to beat the scaling. Of the score I that see. you're playing against. Yeah, I see. And it's um, all poker hands. It's all poker hands. Oh, and cool. But you can do absurd things yeah. like change your deck so much that five of a kind becomes possible. Oh. Which is not in a regular That's deck neat. of cards. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's even like flush full houses <laughs> that you can get to because you've yeah. got both three of a kind and two of a kind okay. of the same suit. How, what um, type of poker is it? Because there's there's different... Types of poker, right? It's, it's not I don't, really, it's just, it's is not it a hand really, of five? Is it just... Uh, it, it doesn't you have, have the, like... It doesn't have a it doesn't bunch have of cards down. It doesn't have the draw or right? anything. Nah. Texas Hold'em. Okay. Yeah. Or um, you draw... I think eight cards. Okay. By default. And discard and three or something? You have three discards mm. in which you can discard up to five cards. Okay. So it's not like regular poker. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just using poker hands yep, yep, right, as yep. the thing that it's based I on. I get you. Um, yeah. It's other than that, really just like a deck builder where you're trying to get a higher score each time. Now, is there um, is there like a mini game that is like essentially a full open world RPG that Blake would ignore? No. <laughs> but... <laughs> I mean, you could maybe have something else running in the background. Yeah, this is and just this, swap between. This is the inside two. Final Fantasy you're talking about, right? <laughs> Here is a card game in Final this Fantasy. This is in the this Golden Saucer. No, no, right? no. Final Fantasy is inside of this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real like Frog Fractions yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing yeah, that's yeah, going yeah. on. By the um, way, so, sorry, did you know that there is a Frog Fractions too that exists? In I do know game? there is. I don't know yeah. what game it's in though. It's in some sort of fairy city builder game. Oh, weird. Um, I need to. I, I should look into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is it is it is it refreshing that it's um poker hands and not like fantasy cards? Yes. It it is a very refreshing game in general. Um I hadn't played anything like it. I know mm. Nick told me about uh Solitarica, yep. which is another card based roguelite. Yeah. Um but You were not keen on it. Nah, I don't like that one. I I I admit that it's got like good ideas, but it's very difficult to get into compared to Bellatro. That, that that's possible. I think that uh, one of the biggest. I I love Solitaire. It's I think I still think it's one of the best mobile games ever made. I think the biggest issue with Solitaire is that the starter class they give you is so vanilla uh, yeah. that you don't get to see any of the wacky things that you can do with the other classes. Those are uh, you got to pay for the others though, eh? Yes. Yeah. Um, Which I don't think is a terrible um, business model. Yeah, I, don't I think, think it's a terrible. great business model. Um, but maybe if if uh, default one you get is a little more interesting. It might be might hook thing. people more. The thing is that the default one doesn't actually contain any unique powers, whereas mm. all the other classes have a unique power, and you could also play as the default one essentially if you mm. wanted to. Um, right. But, I did try a couple of the others. I did like buy it and. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did, um, you, did you play the rogue? The rogue is probably the most. Yeah, fun. I did play the rogue. You have you get these like crazy long chains. Mm. You can get tons of gold. You can then make a, a wild build where you essentially never give the opponent an opportunity to attack or if you do if they do attack you reflect the damage back to them oh wow cool like you can do all sorts of wacky stuff i never got to that um but i i do really just think it has a big problem with onboarding because early on the game leaves you in situations where you can't do anything except draw often there is a big time even between mm. drawing 
and it's just that gameplay. That is, sounds like a skill issue. It yeah. might be. But those weapons, like those skills are, are designed to like let you chop away a card that is blocking, for example. Something yeah. that would let you roll. So you, you save your, your spell points and you use them to unlock like access to other cards. Yes. Yeah. But you don't know what those cards are. It's like I'm talking about early Unless on you in have the run. Certain powers. Yes. <laughs> but you don't have that early on, right? That's true. So the, that's the start true. of the game yes. is the series of playing and not knowing this is true. What this you could have true. done better. Yes. There's it gives you no feedback and yeah. most of the gameplay to gameplay decisions are out of your hand. Like you don't have a choice in what you're doing near the end of a run. Uh, 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 near the end of the early matches. Uh, I don't know that I agree with that. I think, but I, I see where you're coming from. Mm. But when you are true, okay. Classic solid. This is this is solitaire ta- tactics, though, right? Did you play much solitaire? A little bit. Yeah. A long, long time ago. Yeah, I, I haven't played much solitaire in a long time either. But um, but like, oftentimes you're you're given a choice between two possible cards that would like fit the next card that you want to flip. Yep. Right. And one may reveal more cards than the other, or may lead to more options down the road. And it's about, it, it has this a little bit of that, like, um, the the result, the current result may be equal, but one is going to produce more opportunities eventually. And yes. you, you have to consider that part of it when you're making your, 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 your basic, like, card but you solutions. have no knowledge of what's going on in either of them. But you, you know this one will flip one card and this one will flip two, right? Like, that's that's a thing that can happen. Yes. And so you go, okay, well, I want to flip two. But it might also be that, okay, the one I want to flip one of will flip two later. And the one I want to flip two of will have nothing behind it. Just most of the time you don't have that information, though. You can see how many cards are behind a card, though. Yes. Yeah. So that you, can, you can determine how many cards will be flipped next time or the time after that. I'm misunderstanding okay. for sure. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Look, Solitaire may not be for everybody. I, I still think it is. <laughs> I'm now wondering if I was playing it entirely wrong. Or I'm going to is... make you play it in front of me after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, You're so um, militant with like how people have fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, You're having fun wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, but Blotra sounds fun. I, I, I'm probably going to have to pick it up quite soon because... It was one that I think kind of took the internet or at least Steam by storm to some yeah, degree. Yeah, yeah. Um, it sounds really fun. The way you're describing it, it sounds like it has some of that like uh, fun deck building, crazy scaling yeah. that like a good roguelite has. Um, I, I also just from what I saw of it, they've done a really good job of um, making it juicy. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it, it feels like there's of lots of options, lots of things to do. Um, there, like, there's, I think maybe 10 ish starter decks that you can unlock okay. and you've got to go through the progr- difficulty progressions mm. with each of them. I will say though, that, um, the game definitely gets worse as the difficulty goes up mm. okay. because one of the things that made it so fun early on was that you could, based off what sort of jokers, uh, the jokers, um, you have five slots for jokers okay. and they'll, have different kinds of things that they, different kinds of ways they'll affect your score. Yeah. Um, so that kind of like a, a thing that impacts your overall deck. Yeah. Might have like times three mults. Right. To your score. Gotcha. If you meet a certain condition. Um, but based off which ones of those you find, you can kind of make almost anything work. Mm. Um, but as the difficulty goes up, though, each level requires a higher and higher score. Yeah. As one so, of the ways they've uh, made increase the difficulty. Yeah. But that just makes less things possible. Yes. Which I'm not a huge fan of. I, th- I think they've, the difficulty becomes very chance-based rather than mm. trying to make the most of, like, the things you have. Um, yes. I, I don't like I the I way the difficulty scales so much. So you're, you're saying there are, like, hands that give a certain score that then become useless as the they might the not, goal score the, the multiplier might yeah. not be high enough yeah um so so all the right. things that you could like just skim by yep. with early on are no longer a thing right 
But I kind of, I, I see where you're coming from, but I also think that's fine. It, what that does I do is think it, it's fine. It pushes you to change your deck mm. and, and look for other strategies. Um, I've been playing this game called Peglin. I think I may have talked about it yeah, 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 last time. And it is Peggle but, uh, or Pachinko, but a roguelite. Yeah, mm. yeah. And similar scenario where like there are certain things that may be fine early on, and then unless you get other prerequisite parts of a, you know, it's, for example, uh, you, you might have a version where you deal damage every time you use a certain kind of ball. Mm. Um, and uh, unless you start getting something that will heal you, you're just going to die. Yeah. Um, right? So that's just a strategy that does not work long-term, but works short-term. Mm. Um, or you might get lots of healing stuff. And eventually your your opponent's damage will outscale your ability to heal mm. unless you're getting something that deals more damage, right? So you, you have to start looking for different, like, plugs to fill gaps in your build. Yeah. Um, but that is not strictly score-based. There's strategy, there, and there's skill, and there's luck involved in, in that game. Mm. Um, I do also, just before we uh, wrap the podcast, I want to hear about Dragon's Dogma 2. Mm. Blake. Um, I haven't played a heck of a lot of it, but, uh, what I've played is pretty great. Yeah. Um, it, it's basically kind of standard fantasy open world. The, 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 the at least the original, the, the, the style of fantasy they chose was like classic dragons yeah, it's, and medieval. Like it is so it, classic. Everyone talks about Doth Thou... Yeah, Not. actually, that's that's something that really uh, got me, and it actually really draws you into the world because mm. their language is like so Archaic. ye olde, yeah, yeah, which is kind of neat. Um, and their whole world of you know just a classic medieval fantasy, but um, uh, they do just have like uh, these monsters properly uh, out in the environment in ways that, and the, the way that the civilization interacts with them is fairly realistic like mm. they're always worried about monsters on the road yeah you know so when you take like you their fast travel system is an ox cart that you pay for and yeah. then travel and you can literally travel in it in real time so it's not very fast travel <laughs> okay uh or you can like uh skip take a nap yeah right and then you'll wake up at the end or you might get attacked on the road and you'll be woken up when there's an actual monster attack that you mm. have to like help out with that's cool <laughs> so it, it, I like that. Yeah, I really like that too. <laughs> and like, it really makes it feel like the world is like, okay, this is an actual like real thing that yeah. that these monsters are out there that they're always worried about. Um, and you'll just see like griffins flying around mm. as well. And I hadn't seen, uh, I hadn't seen one. Uh, there, there's an intro sort of cutscene thing that there is one, and you're like, okay, that's that's cool. Uh, and then I sort of the game. Uh, opened up to me at a, at a certain point and you get to sort of go uh, uh, out into the open world. And I was just walking along and a big shadow just went whoo, over me. And I was like, uh, what the hell was that? Uh -huh. And I looked up and there's just like this massive griffin eagle thing just flying. Griffin eel? E eagle. Oh, eagle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, like, I haven't, I haven't a griffin met, eel sounds awesome. I haven't awesome. met one of those yet. Maybe they're, who knows? Um, <laughs> it doesn't sound awesome. The front half would be a bird and the back would be an eel. Yeah. Like, doesn't that, like a super, I mean, but what we're at this point is describing like a, a dragon. Yeah. Like a, like a, like a, dragon? a, like a Chinese style dragon. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose that is a, yeah. Um, and um and the thing is it didn't even it didn't attack me because it was so high up. It just like flew by. Like mm. it's just it's just part of the world. That's cool. Yeah. yeah that's and then cool. I, I ran over to like a cliff top to watch it and it went so far away and then mm. like by behind some mountains and I'm like, holy heck, it's just part of the world. That's cool. I, mm. I've been I like I mentioned I've been playing uh The Witcher Three. Yeah. And the monsters are very much bound to a little Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They will go for you. I was uh, I encountered a uh, cyclops fairly early on. Uh -huh. um, now, sorry, just have you cl did you climb on it? Well, no, because um, here's the thing: I'm stunned to wonder if I have chosen not the most engaging class. Okay, because I picked um, mage, mm. and so I am at the back of the party shooting lightning yeah. bolts down on people, and that's fun, but. But I don't, don't get to, get to climb, don't get on, to climb on anyone. Yeah. I don't get to like get in amongst it. I'm basically like constantly staying away from the monsters and relying on 
my companions to keep the monsters at bay while yeah. I cast lightning on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is, I guess, fine, but like... You can change your class. Though. Yes, I know. You can change your class. Yeah. Uh, so I'm wondering of doing that, but um, I mean, I do like the the the, the spells are starting to really like open up, mm. you know. So I've, I've I'm hit level ten now, and uh, I've got a, a few extra spells, and I've got some upgrades from my last spells, and I'm, uh, I'm it's kind of exciting to see like the spells mm. that are opening up. Okay. That, like there's a there's one that just lets me like float. Okay, like levitate, like levitate. Yeah. So I can jump, and it and it then does you'll. A, it has a like little uh, video tutorial, right, uh-huh. of like what what it does. Yeah. And you know, you see the character jump, and you're like, okay, I mean, and float, and you're like, and you're like, okay, that's neat. But then they start casting spells as well while they're flying. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm just like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that but, does but make is, sense. But I'm like, that's really cool. I guess you, do, you avoid to be, ground. Yeah, to, to get out of the the way of combat, so you can just like float in the air. How casting, high up are we talking? Uh, not very high. Yeah. Not very high. You uh, So far, it's basically been like a, a double jump. <laughs> but it's also like you basically have to jump off a ledge to even be able to like do it properly. Okay. So it, you already have to be up high to begin with. Yeah. And this just makes you go up higher. Yeah. Okay. Um, but um, you can, but you, I can use it to like <laughs> also traverse. Uh, like, like gaps. Like gaps. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Um, which is great. And I, I did that once because I look out and I'm like, it, I cannot tell where the borders of the world, like playable world are. Yeah. Like there's mountains and stuff like that, but they look the same as the mountains that you're kind of in yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, maybe I can get up there. Maybe I can do yeah. this. So I, I jumped across a ledge to, yeah. to a sort of a plateau. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, th- this seems great. This seems, start running invisible wall. Oh no. And I was like, what the hell is this? This doesn't. And it was not even oh, difficult to get to. I didn't like do any crazy wall jump. Did, was nonsense. there a message that was like you've reached the edge of the world? It was no. just straight up an invisible. Well, wall? it was it was weird because there's like an invisible wall that, like, there's a there's there's a road right next to it. Yeah. So it just sort of like pushed me away from this cliff that was already there. Yeah. Like so, I don't know why. Like I couldn't. No. I wouldn't been able to get up this cliff. Could it have been an invisible monster? Okay. I don't know what I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it was. That was my last saving grace for that. No. Um, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was I I literally don't know. It, uh, it but it bugged me and I was yeah. like this is a bummer because it it was just a ledge that was very easy to get to. Yep. And there's like this weird square invisible wall. You know what game has a bunch of annoying invisible walls? What? Elden Ring. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. we won't get into it. But anyway, um, it's it's, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm wondering if I should like mess around with other classes. Uh, the story is like fairly, standard. I guess, standard. Yeah. You know, um, it's kind of just the the world that is getting me, and yeah. uh, like, there's a camping system which I like. Um, oh, okay, like you have to build a tent. Yeah, yeah. And then... You have to you have to build a tent and camp for the night. Uh, uh, let's go. And um, your pawn, your they're called pawns. Yeah. Uh, your pawns will tell you when they're getting tired. Mm-hmm. And I really like that because you're you know going down the road, you're adventuring, doing whatever. This sucks. And then, My feet hurt. <laughs> yeah, and then they start complaining. I like, go home. <laughs> I mean, they do. They start going like, man, uh, maybe we should uh, look for a place to rest for the night. Like, blah blah blah. And they'll comment on like they'll comment on things as well where. Um, mm-hmm. They will they will point out air, uh, things of interest in the environment. Yep. You know they'll point That's out cool. chests. They yep. point out ladders all the time, which is the craziest thing. <laughs> Dude, a ladder! Whoa, a ladder! <laughs> well, Dude, ladder! When when you're out in the wild, you're like, oh, that's cool. You know, you're out in the forest, and someone's yeah. like, there's a ladder there, and you're like, whoa, where? But when you're in the middle of a city, and they're like, there's a ladder over <laughs> there, and you're like, well, of course there is. It's a city. What do you want? There's a door there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and sometimes they like, do. There's a road. That's yeah, exact- we're walking on it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, for a point. There's a ladder there. Maybe we should go up it. I'm like, why? It's <laughs> <laughs> that's someone's house. Yeah, that's someone's house. <laughs> there is there is that disconnect of like you can basically go into anyone's house and just take stuff from a chest. Oh, Witcher Three has the worst case of that. Yeah. I'd say, um, literally, even in the city, next to a guard. Yeah, you can you can just grab stuff in most cases. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's, it is kind of obscene. There was a stealing. Is it? There was. There is. Yeah. You, but look, not. Uh, if if you if you're not if you're a bit careless in specific cities and yeah, specific locations, yeah. guards will like turn around and, and start attacking you. But um, I always I always find that a real disconnect in because yes. I. I I felt like that in Witcher as well, where it's like, why can't I just walk into the, I, someone's house? I walk house into this and... pauper's house and I take all of their water. Yeah, and and they, they say nothing. Yeah, and they're watching me. Uh, and I mean, they've fine. been they've been doing this since like Skyrim. But even in at least in Skyrim, there is a more of a, more of a uh, the like um, people, stealing thing is people, yeah 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 is, like, is stronger. Yeah. In almost all cases, if like objects belong to people yeah and if you take them yeah and they're looking and they see you they'll go and tell a guard and then it's yep. a problem yeah mm-hmm. that's actually that's true they're, that that is a somewhat better system in in dragon's dogma your um your your pawns can have a have a certain amount of autonomy okay um there so they will grab stuff they will just grab stuff they out of people's houses house. yep <laughs> i was like walking past oh someone's... he's not with me i was literally like walking past <laughs> someone's house and one of the companions are like Oh, I'll just open. I'll go get that chest, and they just go into someone's house, <laughs> and then I see this thing pop up, being like, "Ching!" That like so, some gold was deposited in my thing, and then they walk out. <laughs> he just robbed the house. In, in The Witcher, you've my... never had a friend like that. <laughs> <laughs> in The Witcher, I I have explained it away as you're a Witcher. Mm. They don't want to like get killed. They so literally they, just they, ignore you. They just, they just turn the blind eye, yeah. and, and it's fine. But in, in and this, in, in this, like, it's like more, it's more like you're running a gang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like out in the wild, that works perfectly fine. Yeah. If you're walking down the road and someone's like, "Oh, I'll grab mushrooms. that chest," and you're yeah. like, "Well, yeah, or mushrooms, or blah blah blah." But when you're in a town, it is such a like disconnect. Yeah. Because I, I was even like reluctant to go into people's houses because I didn't know the uh, yeah the, the, the law rules. system or whatever. Yeah. But now it's yeah, I. I think it's just anything anything, anything goes. goes you can do whatever it's all your stuff they're just holding it on yeah they're just, just, just holding, holding on to it, it for you. i would love it if there was a law system as in like you know you you, you steal stuff and they'll people will be upset yeah but some of the pawns have like loose morals not yeah. all of them yeah, yeah. But like there's like a thief class yeah and the like there was class, a thief class and yeah yeah um but then there's also like a bruiser and like the thief class mm. will steal stuff and he'll get away with it a lot yeah, of times yeah. and the bruiser will Steal stuff, and he will not get yeah. away with it. Mm. Well, this 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 would align perfectly with their um, their I can't remember what it's called, but they have a per, they have personalities. Yeah, they there's there's like uh maybe maybe like four or five ish or so personalities. Okay, and one of them is like they will um they will prioritize uh gathering stuff and taking stuff over fighting. So you okay. can have a straight up sure, thief sure, sure, class. Sure. They're, they're great for like if you're out in the wild, they'll yeah. just like run off gathering stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah, and they're they're great. And then there's other other personalities that are like, I I just fight. I just want to fight. Yeah. that's it. I'm not worried about anything else. I'm not gonna bend over and pick stuff up. No, I'll stand. <laughs> I'll stand right next to a chest, and I'm not gonna open I'm, it. I'm I'm covered in armor. You have any idea how hard it is to bend down? Yeah, yeah. It's how many exactly, companions can you have? You can have three. three. Okay. It, it's, it sort of simulates like a four-person party. Mm, yeah. And it's a purely single-player game, which I find really interesting. Like, they have chosen, as a design direction, they said, we'll make it feel like a multiplayer, but it will not be multiplayer. Mm. Mm. They have online stuff. Like, for example, pawns that you can hire come from other players. Yeah, I did hear that. Yeah, that is a neat thing. Like, I, you, you go to this, like, Waystone thing, and you yeah. see a selection of, of pawns, and... You can see like who made them and all this sort of stuff, and then you can get your main pawn. Uh, you can give him a quest. Mm. Um, basically, you can set up, set him up with a quest for another real world player, mm. and then after you've rested at an inn, uh, if a real world player had used your pawn, uh, your pawn then tells you. That's and cool. and gives you like a rundown of what they did. Yeah, and they'll be like, we we adventured over here, and we did. We went this into and someone's we went house. We opened up their yeah. chest. We took all their gold. It yeah. was great. <laughs> and it's and it's like really cool. And you can well, you can get through this system. You can because you can assign a quest um, to that pawn. It will hopefully entice another player to um, use your pawn because yeah. you'll you'll give them a reward as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, that's a good system. Yeah, and and you can get something back. So I've got uh, my main pawn. I got him to um, set a quest to like kill a cyclops, so he gets like some badge, yep. which which like increases is you know whatever stats or something. Um, and, uh, and 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 so I've I've set that, 
and then I'm hoping yeah. someone can just level up my porn for me, I, basically. I do think it's very funny that you're like, I've set them with this quest, and the reward is like some stats or whatever. <laughs> like, you have no idea what the reward is. Well, I, the, the important thing is that there's a reward. Yeah. The thing was, the, the, the badges, like, they do something uh, really good, but I don't remember what it is. Ooh, okay, great. <laughs> because so a, that's, a, that's a, tool tip did, a tool tip did pop up <laughs> when I we're talking about badges, and they're like, oh, yeah, porn's with badges. You know, they've, they're like better at this and better at that and whatever. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, <laughs> but I mean, uh, I can just go back and look. written those But I know, tips. yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but I, the tooltips, like, I really did skim through a lot of them. Uh, I'm just like, yeah, I'll figure it out. You bumhole. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, but they, the cool thing with the tooltips is that they are stored in a very clear place. There's not actually that many of them. Okay. Um, so I can, if I want to look up what those badges actually give me, I yep. can just go to that bit and be like, oh, yeah, it's like, whatever, in increase stuff. There was would you, Now, you, would you recommend this game? Because... Here's, this is uh, the current controversy. Yeah. Completely taking the game itself out of the mm. equation is is a big, expensive game, and it also has lots and lots of cosmetics and I've not, sections and, or whatever they, uh, uh, they kind of penny pinch you for. Yeah, I've not looked at the microtransactions for it at yeah. all. Um, On Steam, it has like a very, very low rating. Yeah, because, because of this. Yeah. Yeah, because gamers that. do not like paying for a game Yeah, and then having to potentially pay for other things well, yeah. so it wasn't announced right that it would have yes. microtransactions and so I, that, came... I think that might actually paul you raise a very good point i think that might be the actual issue is... I, th I think so because uh i was reading through the reviews and you get past like the majority of the negative ones and there's someone all the way down there that's like oh you don't need to buy the thing yeah you can do it in game you just need to Get, uh, so this was for uh, re-skinning your character. Okay. There's a three dollar microtransaction that um, right. you can pay to make your character look different. Yeah. Um, and there's some other way to do it that was quite like involved. And, yeah, it just wasn't clear. I think. Right. Um, I think it was something like you had to get like five hundred gold and then hmm. go to a dude to buy a thing and then take that thing to the barber. Yes. Um, so I think it was not clear that people didn't know that there was microtransactions in it. And then the thing they wanted to do was also like hidden from them. Yeah. So it seemed like the only way to do it was microtransactions. So I think that this game, this is a really interesting one. And I, I would love to find out what the dynamic between the developer and the publisher is. Because this is a game that has gone out of its way to create friction between a lot of systems. Mm. Right. So, for example, the quick travel system that Blake just described, it is not A to B instantaneously. Mm. It is A to B at the pace of a cart, and also you'll get attacked. Sometimes. Also, you can get attacked, but you could also not get attacked. Like, I, yeah. I did the whole, like, take a nap, and then I was, like, straight there. Did you have to pay money to use the cart? Yes. More friction, right? Yeah. So, there's, and did you have to go to a specific location? Yes, at a specific time of day. There you go. Yeah, so there's, yeah. there's lots and lots of different parts of friction and they, this was, I've, I've read a little bit about this. This is a very intentional design choice. The, the designers want the world to feel real. They want a lot of friction because, because they want players to like explore mm. the world on foot. Yep. Right. Like I was, I'm a big fan of this perspective. Yeah. <laughs> I was, um, cause in, so in Witcher, right. I basically never you engage with the, um, fast travel system until way near the end when I was just like going around collecting, um, armors from hidden chests yep. because, it's um, fun to run around. It's fun to go around, yeah. you know? And yeah. and even the same in Skyrim. Like, I'd never engaged with the fast travel system uh, until, like, way later in the game. Yes. You know, When it's like, I've explored the a, a, all yeah. the spaces between A and B. Yeah, I want to see which path to be. So you just go, ba yeah. yeah. Um, So this is a game that is like that, right? They've, mm. they've created a really dense, thick, fun world, and they want players to run around in it. Now, then there's all these cosmet all these microtransactions mm. that cut past this friction so my question is was this a late decision mm. by the publisher who saw this as a way to make more money who saw who predicted that there would be players who found these systems annoying and mm. said we will charge players for this because that's my guess my guess is the designer had a mm. the, the game designer and the game director what it, like the developer had this vision for a uh world with friction that causes the player to play a specific way mm. they feel will be advantageous and fun for the player yep. and the publisher said 
we think there's going to be money in shortcutting this. Mm. And we are in charge, so put these in. Could be. I don't know. Um, because I really like the friction that they've added there, and I would not want to buy yeah. fast travel tokens or whatever to, to <laughs> Spend go. Spend money to not play the yeah. game. Yeah, yeah I'm so... <laughs> literally spending the mo money to enjoy the game less. So yeah. here's my theory, is if the game had, if, if during press and reviews and whatever else, mm. the game director or whatever, you know, someone had said, um, yeah, we've got all this friction in the world. We, we really think it's more fun to play this way. However, mm. we will include an option for people who want to pay to shortcut these mm. things. Because we think if, if you really, really care about it, we don't really want you to do this, but you have the option to spend three bucks. And do yeah, it. Mm. yeah. That would probably have been received much less poorly. Mm. It wouldn't have been yeah, received so. well. You know, people would still be like, yeah. this, is, this is dumb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they would know about it. It wouldn't be like review bombed. Mm. That's my guess. Because it, it, it got slammed yes. on Steam. Yes. Um, and you're saying it's like a fun game that you're having a good time. It's great. Right? Yeah. Everyone that I've talked to that's actually playing it yeah. mm. is having a good time. So I think that's... I think that's that, like three also, people. Also, <laughs> everyone, I've, everyone I've talked to about it, which also was like maybe two people, <laughs> uh, they have not bought any microtransactions. Yeah. yeah. Like they are on board with the, 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 friction. the friction, you know? Yeah. I think this is um, a classic case of a publisher screwing over the studio uh, mm. by by doing bad PR. It's um <laughs> who's the publisher? Is it Capcom? Yeah. Are they the yeah. And it's and it's a first party yeah. studio. Yeah. So like it's a studio owned by Capcom. Yeah. But you know, it, it, I don't I don't think that the game director was like blah blah yeah. blah but this What if stuff. what if they had this is this has also happened in Devil May Cry. Oh yeah. And other Capcom games recently where they have a bunch of like lots and lots and lots of like two, three dollar microtransactions yeah. ah. that for things that can be unlocked in game yeah. or so that are pure. That's key. interesting. Do these things pop up in game as a way of being like, hey, into hey, go buy this thing no. with real money? No, it's not like a mobile game. Yeah, it is. It is almost certainly just a flag that is like quickly built into the system, probably late in the process to shortcut mm. a design mm. decision. It's funny because I don't. I don't care as much if it's not advertised in game yeah. that it's there's something I can optionally pay for. At least I've not seen anything at yeah. all that has That's so weird. That has it's, said anything like that. I think also the, the, the base price of the game is a big part yeah. of this problem. Yeah. yeah. It is like hundred and fifty bucks on Steam. Yeah. Which yeah, it's, is it's 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 obscene. probably the most expensive game I've ever bought. I I don't know. I have a weird relationship with the price of games because one, I play on console, so I have to pay more. Anyway. Mm, yeah. And two, I can't see how games can always launch at the same price for the last however many years. I think games have to. I mean, they have. They well, have crept up. Like one hundred twenty dollars yeah. is not unheard of. The Paul, but the, this is like one thirty New Zealand, which is like the most so far. Yeah. That I've, yeah. I've it's seen. just like on console. That's yeah. normal. Well, on console, you're paying for you're paying a licensing fee, and you're you are doing that for Steam as well. But I suspect console licensing fees are more expensive because um, you're paying for Sony to mm. vet the game, to do like we you we've dealt with with publishers and yeah. you know mm. at, at grinding your games, um, and there's a lot of work that they do on their end, and they take a cut of sales. Yep. Um, on top of that, uh. The reason games could stay basically the same price for 30 years is just scale. More people More playing them. More people are buying games. It used to be that a console would sell a few mm. million, and that was huge. Mm. Like, uh, like uh, uh, there'd be like 10 million Nintendo 64s in, in the US or whatever. And that was like a lot. Yeah. And now, 10 million is like a failure for for a system. Mm. Right? It's play, the Sony, play, the PlayStation sold like. PlayStation 4 was like 80 million in the US or something like that. So it's just there are more games, mm. consoles out there. There are more mm. games being sold. There's also more platforms. Mm. Like the, you, most games are cross-platform nowadays. There are not that many console exclusives. And a lot of them also go on PC. So you can do the same amount of work and sell it across three platforms at a, for a much, much larger audience. Mm. So the price doesn't need to go up. It does require more work to do it on more platforms. Though. Yes, it, there, there is more work. But it's not... It's not triple the work. No, not to, not to do. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Um, so that's that's the big 
part of why the price is now we might be hitting a critical point you know where there are i I just i feel like games were 60 bucks for a real long Mm, time yeah well the thing is like most are still you know under a hundred easy yeah it's it's these like big tentpole ones like diablo 4 was uh, i think i paid 120 for it um and this is like 130. So really, it's not even. I think I might. Out. I'm pretty sure it was 150 on Steam. You might have gone on a discount. Um, no, there was a there was a like collector's type edition one that was like oh. maybe one. I don't think I got it for 150. That's like, I don't think I'd spend that much. Did, but maybe I did. I, I don't know. I don't think I did. I'm pretty sure it's I did. Expensive didn't. though. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it, anyway, what I'm saying is that these big big games, like, justify their price, but um. The majority of games, you know, the majority of games I buy are like easily under a hundred all the time. Yep. I mean, Vampire Survivors mm. is two bucks. Yep. Right. Like, I mean, Bellatro is thirty. I think a lot of roguelikes are around the yeah. like twenty to thirty dollar price yeah. point. Yeah. Like twenty to thirty something dollars is usually what I pay. If if I'm buying a game that's like fifty bucks, I am thinking like, do I really want to play this game? Yeah. You know. Yeah, I'll wait for the sale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then a big game, you know, like Dragon's Dogma, I'm I'm I'll wait for the play sale. it. I'll 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 pay that. <laughs> All right. Well, we're out of time. Yeah. Uh and my little tablet is running a battery. Oh so. man, that tablet is just no good anymore. No, it's a bad tab. Yeah, bad tab. Um, uh, if you've got any questions, you can email frenziedquestions at gmail.com. Uh we love hearing from you. We'll we're, we're apparently yep. we're reading out questions at the front, which is good because the tablet dies. Halfway through the podcast. Yeah, it's called Front Seat Gamer. So you should yeah. so front seat, load it with front seat questions. Gamer, front load questions. Yeah, front load questions. Yep. And so front if, seat questions at gmail.com. Yep. If anyone has anything to say about Dragon's Dogma, I'd love to hear it. Um, yes. I'm, I'm only... Uh, a little I'm only a little... Yep. Or if... I don't know if you've heard of this game, Witcher 3. Witcher, or Witcher 3. Witcher 3, is that what Witch, it is? Witcher. <laughs> Witcher. Yeah, it's, it's Witcher the third. <laughs> I've been playing through the Shakespeare play. Um, <laughs> I... I just immediately imagine the Witcher, but he's just got a lisp. <laughs> His what, name was I'm, Richard the whole time. I'm Witcher. Witcher Fui. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> now Geralt is like a toddler who's just learned mm. to speak. That is the game on. Oh, you've got a, you've oh, got no. a Gwiffin? <laughs> oh, I take care of the Gwiffin. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be back in a couple weeks. I want to hear more about the Witcher as well Nick, next All right. time. All right, we'll talk, um, we, we'll talk about it. Because I talked about it exhaustively did, way did. back. And, and, and that's why I, I don't Simone know that I need it. to talk about it. But I do. I have a lot just, to say about it. I just want to know that my opinion was uh, correct. Uh, so everyone was right the whole time. Oh, no. Bad game. <laughs> Bad game. Um, we'll How do you feel about GTA? Weeks. A perfect game. Oh, man. All right. We'll be back. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You, you you did the you went through the Baron quest right? Baron the Baron oh Baron quest yes yes yeah that's fantastic. how did he how did that end for you? Um, he's still alive. Oh, he wasn't for me. You killed the fa- the hags. I you yeah. saved the thing out of the hill. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> did you see the consequences of saving the thing out I of the hill? I googled them because uh. I was like, I have this choice. I don't know what the choice means. And um, I that's what I like. So there's games where like. I feel like in a lot of video games, you are kind of like trained to just do what you're told. Yes. And oh, game... this is very shady of great. Mm. And um, very, a lot of hidden information. Mm. Um, I'm really enjoying it. But also the information is like, there's this weird, crazy monster demon thing that's trapped under this like thing. Yeah. Should I release him? Yeah. Oh, he's telling me that I, that he's actually helpful. Or she's she, it, this weird beating hill heart is saying... Uh, it's pretty chill. Yeah. I mean, uh, but all so- visuals. <laughs> this is why I got into, um, you know, uh, Auntie Ethel. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I was helping her out uh-huh. the whole way. Like, I got her to, like, pluck out one of my eyeballs yeah. and, like, replace it. And I was fully down the thing because I was just like, despite her looks, yeah. I'm sure she's great. Oh. <laughs> but, but... Everything else is screaming, she is a monster. <laughs> you should probably not the, deal the, with the, her. The old lady's going, you're not a shite! <laughs> <laughs>
Yes. <laughs> oh, you have to look, eat your brain. Yeah. Oh, she seems cool. I like her. I think like she's, she's chill. She's great. She's... <laughs> Um, but it's yeah, it's that thing of like, like all signaling is saying this is a bad thing, but, but you're like, are they really though? <laughs> but, uh, so like, I did the 